Monday night, driver Ryan Newman was hospitalized following a horrifying crash at the end of the Daytona 500, a crash that left many of us unfortunately fearing the worst, but now I'm happy to say less than 48 hours later, Ryan Newman is not just walking on his own, but he has been released from the hospital. We have a lot to discuss on today's episode and a lot of good news to be thankful for. How's it going, you guys? My name is Eric, and welcome to Out of the Groove. It's been quite a roller coaster of emotions uh, the last two days, less than two days, day and a half. It's been, it's been insane. Uh, if you missed my video that I did uh, the morning after the Daytona 500, it was, the mood was quite somber. It really was around the entire NASCAR community. At that point, we already knew that Newman's injuries were not life-threatening, but it was still a very somber moment, I'd say, for a lot of, uh, a lot of not just the racing community, but really just the whole entire world. A lot of people. The support for Newman was not limited to just motorsports related uh, people. It was really remarkable to see the outpouring of support for Ryan Newman, you know, a NASCAR veteran, a former Daytona 500 champion, a guy who's won a bunch of races, not just in NASCAR, but in dirt, in other series as well, the Rocket Man. Uh, and it's incredible to see the news this morning, this afternoon, that Ryan Newman has is not just you know, awake and alert and talking to his family and doctors, but even released from the hospital. And I'll go ahead and play the clip right here. This was from earlier this afternoon, just right before I started filming actually, Ryan Newman with his two daughters walking out of the Halifax Medical Center in Florida. That is, less than 48 hours ago, he was skidding to a stop on the front stretch at Daytona and the crowd of the world was shocked. Nobody knew how to react to what they had just seen. Everyone feared the worst. And to go from that to this, to this photo right here, that is, Say what you will, I, but that is incredible. That is the best news I have heard in a long time. So we'll talk specifics here. Nobody has made any official statement yet as to you know what injuries Ryan Newman did sustain, because we do know he had serious injuries according to the initial reports. Uh, obviously he's walking, obviously he was alert, so things could have been a whole lot worse. At least it seems right now that on the surface, things don't look nearly as bad as they could have been, but we still don't know the extent of what Newman's injuries were. Uh, we don't know when he's going to be back in the race car, if he's going to be back in the race car. You know, I'm not going to sit here and speculate about Ryan Newman's future. We know for the entry list this weekend at Las Vegas, uh, Ryan Newman is not listed as the driver of the six. Roush Fenway has not yet announced who will drive the six cars. Hi, excuse me, interrupting myself here from the future. Uh, I'm now editing the video and it was just announced or it was just uh, reported by Adam Stern uh, that Ross Chastain Stain is going to be filling in for Ryan Newman in the sixth car starting at Las Vegas. Newman's uh, return date is TBD at this point, but he was released from the hospital. So uh, yeah, Ross Chastain, kind of surprising. Chevy driver, going to be uh, in a Ford. Um, but there you go, Ross Chastain will be in the sixth starting this week. Once again, just a testament to the engineering that goes into these race cars and, and, and their tracks as well, you know, safer barriers, the catch fence and everything. The fact that this didn't end up worse than it was is... I, NASCAR safety continues to blow my mind. It feels like every few years there's an incident. You know, McDowell in 08 with the car tomorrow, that was shocking. Austin Dillon in 15 in the Gen 6 going to the fence, that was shocking. Newman the other night, just once again, these cars and NASCAR's engineering and dedication to safety here the last 15, 20 years especially cannot be commended enough. I mean, that the biggest round of applause in the world to everyone and anyone who's worked on safety in NASCAR and motorsports in general because this is unbelievable. Ryan Newman got hit in probably the worst spot to get hit on a race car. And he got hit hard. And not just the worst like just generic, no, like the worst like possible square foot on the car to get hit by another race car. That's what Newman that's where Newman got hit Monday night. I can't believe that he's walking out of the hospital as fast. This is insane. Um obviously I still wish Ryan Newman the best cuz I'm sure his recovery, he's still not fully recovered, but ah, this is just such good news. I'm, I'm just so relieved at this point that things weren't worse than they could have been. I'm a broken record. I'm repeating myself. I do want to get serious in this video because I don't want to just talk about you know, how great it is, Ryan. I mean, it's great that Ryan Newman is walking and that he is going to survive and looks like he might make a full recovery from, from his injuries. Again, don't want to speculate. Uh, I, I'm super relieved, really excited, but I do want to get serious and talk about you know what type of changes or what type of response NASCAR should have, if any, to this incident. Because anytime there is a major, a major incident like this where a driver is hospitalized, the car went upside down, NASCAR needs to take a look at itself. It always has in the past, and I think it will and should again in this instance. And 
maybe there are some changes that need to be made to decrease the likelihood of something like this happening again. Does NASCAR need to make a change? And safety has come a long way in NASCAR in a short amount of time, from Hans devices you know, becoming mandatory at every track or in every race. The body of the cars, the doors, the roll cage have all been reinforced. Safer barriers at all the racetracks. Pretty much every inch of every track now is covered by a safer barrier wall. The catch fences have uh, undergone their own evolution. But despite all these improvements, super speedway races, you know, Daytona, Talladega especially, remain the most dangerous tracks in NASCAR. And so that's what I want to spend a lot of this video talking about. You know, since Talladega last spring, less than a year ago, NASCAR got rid of restrictor plates at the super speedways. You know, since uh, Talladega last spring in 2019, NASCAR runs 550 horsepower thanks to a, ta a tapered spacer, which is up from, I think maybe 410 is what they used to run with the restrictor plates. So they've upped the horsepower at the super speedway tracks, but in return, they've also increased the size of that rear spoiler, added the wicker bills and everything to create more drag to help slow the cars down. Uh, that's kind of been their trade-off. No more restrictor plates, but a larger rear spoiler to still kind of slow the cars down and add some drag. And you know, there's other effects, obviously, that, that happen as a result. But since NASCAR did away with actual restrictor plates and switched to this, uh, you know, tapered spacer 550 horsepower super speedway package last year, speeds at Daytona and Talladega have increased. That is 100% the truth. In fact, even if you go back to May last year, or April, whatever it was, when that Talladega race was, I remember in practice, they were testing and they thought the cars were going a little too fast in practice and actually increased. That's when they added the wicker bills to make the spoilers even bigger because they thought the cars were still going too fast with their original package. So they were slowing the cars down the, the weekend of the race still to make sure they got them to a speed that they were comfortable with. But even so, right now with these cars in a pack at Daytona and Talladega, they're easily hitting 200 miles an hour, often going well over 200 miles an hour. And that's kind of a danger zone, I think, for NASCAR. And I think NASCAR knows that. And so this year's Daytona 500 was technically the fourth race now, the fourth super speedway race with this, you know, no restrictor plate, 550 tapered spacer horsepower type engine and big spoiler. This is the fourth race that we've seen this package. And in those four cup races now, three of them have featured a car getting upside down. Larson flipped at the end of that Talladega race last spring. Brendan Gaughan flipped at Talladega in the fall. Remember that one? And then, of course, Ryan Newman here at the end of the Daytona 500. So three flips in four races. Now, flips are not uncommon at super speedway tracks, but when you have three flips in your first four races with a new package, yes, NASCAR needs to look in the mirror and figure out what, if any, changes need to be made to this package because... Cars getting upside down, that's when bad things happen. You know, that's that's when things can get tragic. Now I wanna shout out NASCAR man on Twitter. Uh, I saw this yesterday. He posted a side-by-side -side comparison to Kyle Busch's wreck at the end of the 2009 Summer Daytona race and of course Ryan Newman's wreck from earlier uh, this week. You can see both at the wall in a similar spot, but Kyle Busch does not flip. Bush does not go upside down. That's back in 2009. That was the ugly big wing car tomorrow cars, but Kyle Busch did not flip and Ryan Newman did. What was the difference? Could it just be the aero differential between the car tomorrow? You know, those things add those huge wings and big splitters on the front. Is it just a difference between aero from the Gen 5 to, and the Gen 6? That could be it. But NASCAR man points out in this uh, in this tweet that speed differentials were also a major factor, potentially. Back in 2009 at the Super Speedway races, those cars were only really maxing out around maybe 195 miles an hour in a pack. They were not getting up to 200 miles per hour. They still had the restrictor plate. Versus what we have today, what we had this past weekend at Daytona, cars were getting over 200 easily, 205, 206 sometimes. The 2019 and 2020 rules package at super speedways is 10 miles an hour faster than the 2009 rules package at super speedways. And that 10 miles an hour is very significant when we're talking about this type of racing. And so this seems like low hanging fruit. A lot of people will probably look at this and say, oh, well NASCAR should just decrease the speed of these race cars. Get the, you know, 2020 cars down back into the mid 190s, you know, just maybe just bring the restrictor plate back. I mean, what's what's really, what's that really gonna do? What's the harm in doing that? People are used to restrictor plates at super speedways. Nobody's gonna criticize you for doing that. I think if NASCAR makes any changes as a result of this Newman incident, that is probably the first one they're gonna consider because it's the easiest and, I'll be honest, it would make a difference probably. Now, I will say this. You can only do so much to improve the safety of NASCAR racing. I, at the end of the day, these guys are strapped into big metal machines going extremely fast in tight groups with little room for error. It's just, it's not safe. It's not inherently safe. NASCAR and motorsports in general are always going to have an element of danger to them. Now, I think it's very important and very good that motorsports continue to evolve and, and add to the safety and prioritize safety. I think that is very, very important, but it's also worth noting that you're never gonna get the risk down to zero. You're never gonna completely eliminate the possibility 
of something like what happened to Newman happening again. You can do virtually anything and there's still a chance somebody's gonna get hurt because this is just, these are motorsports, these big machines going fast. And these cars that we're racing in the Cup Series today are already extremely safe. I mean, what more can you ask? Austin Dillon went from 180 to zero almost instantly into the catch fence a few years ago and walked away. I, and now this Newman thing, as horrifying as it looked, I, again, he got hit as hard as you can get hit in the worst spot on the car. And two days later, more or less, he's walking away too. What more can you really do to these cars? I don't know, man. They are about as safe as it gets. NASCAR also revealed that they are taking Newman's car, what's left of it, and Corey LaJoy's car, what's left of it, uh, to the R&D center, obviously to do safety checks to see you know, how this wreck could have been avoided, maybe what helped save Newman's life, I, I, especially. I'm very curious to hear NASCAR's report on uh, what they found saved Newman's life or helped protect him uh, inside that race car, because that is, wow. When it comes to NASCAR, the sanctioning body making changes in response to this, I do think they need to look at the speeds of the cars because these cars are going faster in a pack than they have in a long, long time. And as entertaining as this package has been the last couple of years, because with the big rear spoiler punches a big hole in the air, there's a lot of big aggressive runs we see, the closing rates are fast, and that creates exciting moments. Drivers can make big, bold moves, blocks can be thrown, and sometimes things go badly. I do think that Perhaps there is a sacrifice that needs to be made there because these Gen 6 cars, the bumpers on them do not line up the way the Gen 5 bumpers did, so you cannot lock bumpers as effectively as you can, uh, as you used to be able to, and that's what caused a lot of the wrecks we saw uh, in the Daytona 500, just bumpers not lining up quite right, and it turns people around, and that's what sparks, I mean, that's what sparked the Newman wreck was, you know, if, if they were driving car tomorrow, if they were in 2011 cars and, New and uh, Blaney got behind Ryan Newman there, he would have just pushed him to the victory. It wouldn't have been an issue. But with the way these front ends are, they're curved, the cars are different, it turned him. And I think that's something NASCAR can address potentially, or I think that's what they're going to have to look at there is, uh, is the body of the cars, especially with the next gen coming out next year. I don't know how they tweak it for the super speedways, if they tweak it. Uh, maybe it's just as much as eliminating some of those strong runs we're getting. I don't know. It's... It is what it is. It's going to be a tough call for NASCAR. I think the most likely thing they do is consider dropping the horsepower, which would be tapered space or restrictor plate, obviously. I think that's what they're most likely to consider. Is that the best option? I don't know. I do think the speeds are borderline out of control right now in a super speedway pack, uh, but I don't know. We'll see what NASCAR does. I do think that the drivers, this was a huge wake-up call for a lot of the drivers, and this is what I talked about a little bit in my video uh, yesterday or whenever I uploaded it. I know Ryan Newman was not seriously injured it appears and he more or less is okay after this wreck but still seeing the impact seeing what could have been how awful that almost was is gonna be a wake-up call to a lot of younger drivers especially I read a Jeff Gluck article yesterday uh, from The Athletic and he asked Ross Chastain why drivers seem to have no fear making aggressive moves at super speedways and Ross Chastain uh, responded, probably ignorance, honestly. I feel safe. Even if we crash, I feel like everything is going to do its job and keep me safe. That quote was from last week. That was before the Daytona 500, but I think that Ross Chastain's a young driver. He's what, 27, I believe. I think that kind of just embodies what a lot of young modern NASCAR drivers have grown up with. That's a mindset they've consistently grown up with because we have not had a death, a fatality in the NASCAR Cup Series, Xfinity Series, or Truck Series since 2001. That was almost 20 years ago. And my theory is a lot of these young drivers in NASCAR today are just not old enough to remember the impact of that incident you know, in 2001. I mean, I didn't even start watching NASCAR until 2004. I don't think I have the same perspective on that accident uh, that a lot of people who are older than me probably do. Everyone knows the sport is dangerous. Everybody understands that there is a lot of risk involved, but a lot of the drivers in NASCAR today have not seen that risk firsthand, so to speak. They have not seen the potential fallout for the, the potential consequences. They have not seen that firsthand because they're just too young. A lot of these drivers have been racing in the 2010s. Go back to that 2001 Daytona 500, you know, Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Mark Martin, Jeff Burton, Matt Kenseth, Dale Jarrett, Tony Stewart, Kurt Busch, etc., etc. All those drivers were in that race and saw that tragedy and they went through that tragedy firsthand. And many of those guys were still racing until maybe the last couple of years. Kurt Busch is still racing. Drivers like Jimmy Johnson, Brian Newman, Clint Boyer, Kevin Harvick, you know, were all around. They weren't in that race, but they were all around and they experienced the aftermath, the aftershock, the dark cloud that that tragedy cast over the sport. They were, they were old enough to experience it firsthand and they all remember it to this day, I'm sure. All of those drivers I just mentioned raced their entire careers with that tragedy in the back of their mind. 
Again, there's not been a fatal crash in the NASCAR Cup, Xfinity, or Truck Series since Dale Earnhardt in 2001. And going back to that, Ryan Blaney was seven when that happened. Chase Elliott was five years old. William Byron was three years old. They just don't remember it the way that the veteran drivers that are starting to retire do. A lot of these drivers that are still in their 20s or younger today just weren't old enough in 2001 to fully internalize what had happened. At least that's my theory behind this. And that's why I think we've seen an uptick overall in just kind of aggressive racing. And NASCAR, the sanctioning body, is not entirely innocent uh, in this either. You know, back Brian France, what was it, like 2010? You know, the boys have at it thing. That was like a campaign. That was a quote he made. The, the theory was, you know, drivers settle your differences on the racetrack. They were trying to encourage conflict, basically trying to encourage crashing. They wanted drama on the track because they were worried their drivers were becoming too bland and too personality-less. NASCAR since then has backtracked on that a little bit. And I think that was definitely not a great thing to say. One of Brian France's many Blahs. But it feels like a lot of younger drivers these days are just very aggressive. I mean, I watched some K&N West races last year. Oh my god. It was blatant. Every corner someone was getting taken out, it felt like. NASCAR's issue is that both NASCAR and I think most of its fans want really tight racing, edge of control, close racing, back and forth, side by side. That's what the fans really want and that's what NASCAR wants to deliver for the fans. Unfortunately, when we're talking about this broad spectrum of types of racing, that is a very narrow sweet spot to try and hit because it's very easy for the fields to just become spread out, you know, strung out and not a lot of passing, a lot of single fire. And that's very easy to slip into that. And that's, you know, traditionally thought of as kind of boring by most NASCAR fans. Most NASCAR fans don't want to see that typically. But on the other end of that spectrum, when you're racing really close and side by side for any significant amount of time, it's also very easy to slip up and wreck. And that's why we can easily see like what we saw in the clash or at the end of the Daytona 500, lots of wrecks, lots of mistakes and things can get dangerous. And ultimately, I don't think NASCAR wants to see a bunch of wrecks and I think NASCAR also does not want to see a bunch of boring single file racing in their opinion. And I think fans think the same way. Most fans don't want to see just a crash fest. Most fans don't want to see that. Most fans also don't want to see strung out, you know, five seconds apart type racing. NASCAR and the fans want to see that sweet spot of close edge of control, side by side, back and forth racing. And the problem is that's such a narrow sweet spot to hit that it's very difficult to do that without slipping into one of those other groups. Boring single file racing and over aggressive crashing and dangerous racing. And that's the problem NASCAR has and that's something that I don't know how you fix that. Some people argue that NASCAR, you know, with, by adding stage breaks with extra cautions, they're trying to encourage crashing or uh, with uh, the 2019, now 2020 intermediate package that's trying to encourage more tight racing on restarts. They're acting like NASCAR is trying to encourage more crashing. No, that's not what NASCAR, NASCAR does not want the drivers to crash a whole bunch more. That's not what NASCAR wants. I'm convinced. NASCAR is trying to reach that sweet spot. But like I said a second ago, that sweet spot's very narrow. And yeah, more restarts accomplishes this. Tight racing back and forth, that's restarts. Unfortunately, this can easily bleed into crashing and this you know, can also easily devolve into strung out single file racing like, you know, that, that fans don't really want to see. So I think NASCAR has kind of an unsolvable problem there. I think the drivers, their mentality is probably going to change a little bit after this Newman issue, even though Newman seems to be okay. It obviously wasn't as bad as it could have been. I do think this is going to uh, change a lot of drivers' mindsets, especially at the super speedways. I mean, remember, even this last week in the clash, Brad Keselowski was calling out his own teammate for aggressive blocks. Drivers already have safety on the mind, on their minds, I think, at these racetracks. Uh, this issue with Newman is only going to make that even more prevalent. So I don't know what NASCAR needs to do to change their approach to this. I think they need to look at the race cars more than anything. I don't think the format is what's going to do this. It doesn't really matter if you change the format. If you get rid of overtime, you know, no matter what, whenever the last lap is listed as, that's when drivers are going to be aggressive and that's when you're at risk to see these bad wrecks. I, that's just, I don't think that's really what needs to happen. Again, these cars are as safe as it gets these days. I, I don't know what change really needs to be made. I do think NASCAR is more, more than anything going to look at the cars themselves going forward. Don't know if they're going to make any changes, but I think they will take a good hard look after what we've seen in the last nine or ten months at the super speedways. But that's just my opinion. Uh, this video is kind of all over the place. Tried to keep it fairly organized, but I kind of was going down a lot of different avenues all at once. But more, more than anything, I'm just really thankful to see Ryan Newman okay. Uh, Ryan Newman is alive, and that's just those photos, that little video. That is a welcome sight to see. Did not. Did not think that was going to be possible after what I saw Monday night. That was 
that's amazing. Still kind of at a loss for words, but thank you all a ton for watching this video. Thanks to everyone who commented on my last video. A lot of really nice comments. A lot of people wish, uh, wishing Ryan Newman well. Felt like a lot of people were kind of using that last video the way I used it. It's sort of like my own personal therapy session. Just talk it out. And uh, I, it was really cool to see all the responses on there. I read a lot of them. A lot of you guys were commenting to each other. Uh, so that was really, really cool to see. Glad that um, I think that accomplished what I was hoping it would accomplish. So I'm really pleased to see that. Um, but yeah, I'll be back. I got some more videos in the works. I'm traveling tomorrow. I'm flying to Las Vegas. Going to be at the Las Vegas uh, race this weekend. I'm going to be there all three days. So keep an eye out for me. I'll post some more stuff here in not too long. I'm going to be at all the next three West Coast races. It's going to be busy. Uh, but a lot of exciting content is in the works this season. <sighs> Almost <laughs> a very scary start to this season. But uh, luckily, um, things seem to be turning out okay. So... I'm very excited to get out there to Las Vegas. Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe if you're new. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. Big thank you to my Patreon supporters, as always. Couldn't do the show without the support I get from all of you guys. And I definitely couldn't travel to the racetracks and do videos uh, at the track without the support I get from all of you on Patreon. So thank you all a ton for supporting me over there. You can check out that top link down below if you want to support me this season as well. I greatly appreciate you guys taking the time to check that out. Thank you. And yeah, I'll be back very soon. This weekend might not have as many videos because I'll be at the track doing a lot of filming. But the following week, there will be a lot of videos from Las Vegas. So so expect uh, expect my feed your feeds to kind of be overwhelmed with uh, with uh, with my videos over the next few uh, few days over the next few weeks really with all the traveling I'm doing but I really appreciate the support guys and I will see you all again very very soon have a great rest of your Wednesday everyone.